if you're in search for a multi-tool and you're not sure what to buy, the $100 might seem like too much. However, once you get something like this, pull it out of the patch. I bought mine from REI, retail for about $100. It's heavy. But once you get to using it, it's it disappears on your hip and it, it feels like a tool. It doesn't feel like some other multi-tools. This feels something that you'd grab from your toolbox, which is great. I've had the Leatherman Micro before, the little, little scissor one that was before the juice came out, I believe. And I loved it. I had it for probably close to 13 years. So I had it when I was pretty young and I thought it was time to upgrade. I wanted a little bit bigger tools. I didn't want it to get lost in my pockets like the Micro did. And this is what I decided on, the Leatherman Surge. Now, I chose this over the Wave because I was pretty certain I'd fall in, with the, fall in love with the Wave and I didn't want to have to change. I didn't want to have to upgrade and end up spending close to $200 for two multi-tools. I wanted to make a one-time purchase. And what really sold me was the blades. Because this is the knife that I used to carry as my EDC blade when we'd go camping. And if you look, this is a three and a half inch blade, this is a three inch blade. And when it comes down to it, they are so similar in length that this became obsolete. They all lock, which is big and important to me because usually when you get a multi-tool, these don't lock and you flip it on your, flip it onto your finger and you just basically have a guillotine for your finger. Uh, Victorinoxes and Swiss tools, they snap, but they don't lock. This is stable. There is absolutely no blade play. And on the outside, again, we have the smooth tool. We have the scissors, which are more like shears. You can cut through so much of this. I've cut through durable plastic. I've cut through leather. It, it can't be stopped. Then we have the serrated blade, which is super thick along the spine, so this is not gonna snap on you. It is dull on the point, so you can slip it under a seatbelt if someone's in a car accident, you can cut through the seatbelt. And all these blades are super, super sharp. They will hold their blade for longer than any blade that I've had. And then last tool on the outside is this. Now, right now I have this in a saw. You might reckon, remember from my other videos that this slides off like that, and I can change that. Now this is huge. This will fit any other jigsaw piece. For example, put that down, make sure I don't lose it. Inside my pouch, there is this smaller pouch. Now this came with it. The other blade that's exchangeable that came with Leatherman is the file, which I use to sharpen the axe. Put that down. Right here, I have an actual jigsaw bit that fits my jigsaw tool back at home. Now, thank you to this little metal piece that was not on the first generation of the Surge, it's new. This snaps right into here, closes, doesn't wriggle, it does not shake, it is strong, and I just fit a jigsaw blade so you don't have to go out and buy other accessories. Only downside though is because this is so large, it doesn't close, which is no big deal for me anyway. I don't need something that big and it fits fine inside a little leather pouch. So I just normally carry the saw. So right there from the outside, you have access to two saw-ish blades, a knife, and a pair of basically scissor shears, all on the outside of the tool. When this blade is closed, this opens free, no big deal. However, let's say the tool's open. That pin slides out and prevents this from opening when you're using it. I cannot open that anymore. That's just an added safety feature that they decided to add in. And another thing that I really like about this compared to some of the Gerber multi-tools is this opens quietly. And that gives you right access to this head. And it is basically a full-size pliers. You have the needle nose bit, and you have the bigger side. What I really like about this, it was what sold me over the Wave, is these come out and I can change them. Now, I, I, you know, I doubted that I would chew these up on the Wave, but if I'm going to keep this for a long time, who knows? Maybe I get into doing something with le uh, like an electrician, or who knows? I won't have to worry about this breaking. And then two tools that I see a lot of people overlook is this, the wire cutter down here, which is the first notch, and then you have a pair of wire crimpers, which is the second notch. And I'm not quite sure how those works, but I know they're there. If I ever need them, if I ever become an electrician overnight, I, uh, they're there. And just below, we have 
the bit driver, which is exchangeable. So I can take that out and I have a flathead and a Phillips. And I can change that out all as much as I want and you can buy different bits from their website. We have a can opener, which I've used. It's super sharp. I sometimes use this to strike my ferro CM rod. And then we have a bladed wire stripper, which you just get wire. Like if I, for example, say this piece of wire, I can stick that in there, press it up against it, and we'll see, it is bladed, <laughs> and spin it, and it'll score around the wire just enough to where it'll come off and you can pull it without using the wire stripper on the head. And this little notch back here, everything clicks. Hardly any play. Let's see if you can hear that. Just like all the, every tool on here locks, except for the pliers for obvious reasons. But listen, satisfying click, and you know that that is safe, and that's safe to use. And just to release it, it couldn't be any easier. You just push down here, and it goes back down. Now, onto the other side. We have three tools on this side. And the inside tools are very functional, but they're not as important as the outside tools, which is why they're a little bit smaller. We have a screwdriver, and we have a larger screwdriver bit, but I'll tell you what I use that for in a second. And then we have an awl. You can use this for drilling holes when you're doing a uh, primitive fire. You can also use it to strike your ferro rod, and you can also use it as a punch, which is actually made for you put the strand you're trying to punch through leather right there, or any other material, and you basically have a gigantic oversized needle. But what I normally end up using this for is a pry bar. Now this is plenty strong because again, it's all stainless steel, high carbon, so you don't have to worry about that breaking. And like everything, this side also snaps in. So that's not going anywhere. And then some of the other minor tools that are kind of, probably don't get a lot of use from me, but the, you know, they might from you, is along here, there is measurements, eight inches or 20 centimeters, depending on where in the world you are. And it just folds out like that. And again, it doesn't pinch. You don't have to worry about this. All these sides are very ergonomic. You don't have to worry about getting injured when you're using this tool. And when it slides, it's fit. It doesn't, there's no play in between like some of the cheaper ones. It is worth the money. Oh, look, smudge, gone. And just to show you, I'll to give you a quick overview. I will open all the tools up and lay that out for you guys to see. In total, you have Two built-in blades, an exchangeable one that can become a file, shears, the pliers themselves, all the tools on the inside, and any of the tools you decide to carry in your pouch. That's why I love this tool so much. You can change this as much as you want. And now I'm going to show you what I've done to the pouch. Alright, so as it sits on my belt, this is what the package looks like. We'll start from the outside and work our way in. We have my Ferris CM rod, which I have tucked around the back so it doesn't fall out, and under the loop. So here we have my striker. I've used the Stardate Fire in my last video. And the striker that this came with was not that great, but if you look on Amazon, this is like $5. So it was totally worth it. It works totally fine if you use a different striker or use a saw blade that's on there. That's exchangeable, so I don't have to worry about damaging my Leatherman. So to put that aside, on the other side, on the little side slits, I have this, which looks like a flashlight. It's not. The batteries are dead. The light's been long broken. But inside, I have a small amount of dryer lint for starting fires quickly when I don't feel like roughing up some grass so it's nice and airy so I can get a fire started. Put that aside. And then we have the Leatherman itself. But first, this is the pouch that it came with. Leather construction. And then it has these nylon straps on the side which are double seamed. It's heavy nylon so you don't have to worry about it breaking. We have a belt loop, dual sides, so we can hold it on our belt like this. Or we can feed our belt loop through it like that. That way we have quick draw. And this buckle is much better than Velcro, so you're not every time you want to open it. It just snaps. Just nicer. I prefer the buckle. Some people may prefer Velcro. You can get Velcro ones for Leatherman. And I know a lot of third parties sell one for the Surge itself because it's so popular. So inside, we have the Leatherman. Sticks out enough to where you can grab it, but not too much to where it's bulky. Put that aside. And then we have this little slit behind. This is where all the extra blades fit. And that's pretty much all this to it. One thing that a lot of people like to do that this case I don't think does very well is if you're using it a lot, people like to leave it open and stick it in the pouch. It'll fit 
it's kind of wobbly. I know there's some other cases Leatherman makes that has a hole down here, so the blade actually sticks through. So you don't have to worry about the head of the pliers getting in the way of the sitting in securely. But this will still work. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you can kind of stick it out to the side. That's my review of the Leatherman Surge. I recommend it for people who are serious about the outdoors and need a tool to carry around with them. I wouldn't recommend to someone who's just getting out for that, I recommend a blade. You don't necessarily need all the tools that this does unless you know how to use them, and you would use something like this on a daily basis. However, this is a great knife for the beginning outdoorsman or bushcrafter. It's sharp, holds an edge well, easier to sharpen because of the softer metal. It is great to throw in the bottom of your bag and forget about it until you need it, whereas this is something that's heavier. You need to really think of co weight to cost ratio. Yes, it's heavy, but how much am I going to use it? For me, my usability of this knife is way more precious to me than how much it weighs. I will, I'm willing to deal with this nearly, I think it's, I think it's close to a quarter, maybe a half pound. It is way worth it for me. I don't want to deal with dinky little multi-tool when I can use this, and I know this will work every time. All right, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you thought of this video. I'm going to head home. See you in the next video.